31st of December, China alerts the World Health Organization to a new virus. 23rd of January, Wuhan is locked down. 24th of January, a study in the British medical journal The Lancet reveals the acute danger to human life from the new coronavirus. On the same day, Boris Johnson skips the first COBRA meeting called to address the crisis. 29th of January, Johnson misses the second COBRA meeting on the new virus. 30th of January, the WHO declares a public health emergency of international concern. 31st of January, Brexit Day, two people in the UK test positive for coronavirus. NHS England declares the first ever level four critical incident. But the Johnson government declines to join a European scheme to source personal protective equipment despite being invited. 5th of February, Johnson misses the third COBRA meeting on the virus. 12th of February, an Exeter University study warns that the virus could infect 45 million people in the UK if left unchallenged. On the same day, Johnson skips the fourth COBRA meeting called to address the crisis. 14th of February, Johnson retreats to the government grace and favour estate at Chevening for a working holiday. Aides are told to keep his briefing notes short. According to one official, box submissions have to be brief if he's going to read it. If they're overly long or overly complex, Dom, Dominic Cummings, sends them back with savage comments. It will later emerge that much of Johnson's time was actually spent reaching a divorce settlement with his estranged wife in order to pave the way for the announcement that he and his girlfriend are now engaged and expecting a baby. 15th of February, the first recorded coronavirus death in Europe. 18th of February, Johnson skips the fifth COBRA meeting on the virus. The Prime Minister did not attend any of them. Is that true? Uh, he didn't, but then... Looking back at this period, a senior Downing Street advisor will later say there's no way you're at war if your PM isn't there. And what you learn about Boris was he didn't chair any meetings, he liked his country breaks, he didn't work weekends. There was a real sense that he didn't do urgent crisis planning. It was exactly like people feared he would be. 26th of February, half a million Britons could die according to a leaked UK government worst case scenario document. 28th of February, the first British coronavirus death is confirmed. 29th of February, NHS bosses warn of PPE shortages and a nightmare facing the health service. But PPE stockpiles have been left to severely dwindle or go out of date. On the same day, Johnson retreats to Chequers to announce his engagement and his fiancée's pregnancy. 2nd of March, Johnson finally attends a coronavirus COBRA meeting. 3rd of March, Scientists urge the government to advise the public not to shake hands. The same day, Johnson tells a Downing Street press conference... I'm shaking hands continuously. I was at a, I was at a hospital the other night where I think there were, a few, there were actually a few coronavirus uh, patients and I shook hands with everybody, uh, you'll be pleased to know, and, and I continue to shake hands. 5th of March. As far as possible, it should be business as usual. On the same day, Greece closes its schools, following in the path of Iran and Italy. 6th of March, Johnson shakes hands with scientists working on an antibody test, putting them at risk. 7th of March, the Prime Minister joins 82,000 closely packed spectators at a Six Nations rugby match. 9th of March, France bans large events and begins stricter distancing measures while Ireland cancels St Patrick's Day parades. The UK government says there is no rationale for cancelling sporting events. And they're off. 10th of March, the Cheltenham Horse Racing Festival goes ahead with 250,000 people attending over four days. Data will later reveal a spike in cases in the region after the event. 11th of March, the WHO declares a global pandemic. Madrid closes its schools as it becomes the epicentre of Spain's coronavirus crisis. On the same day, Johnson allows 3,000 Atletico Madrid fans to fly to Liverpool. An investigation will later be launched into a regional spike in cases on Merseyside. 12th of March, the key date. The UK government sharply departs from the course of action adopted by Germany and South Korea and stops mass testing and contact tracing. The Royal Society of Medicine's Gabriel Scali will later say abandoning testing gave the virus the green light to spread uncontrollably. Also on the 12th of March, ITV's Robert Peston is briefed by the government on its approach. He writes, the strategy of the British government in minimising the impact of COVID-19 is to allow the virus to pass through the entire population so that we acquire herd immunity. On the same day, the government's herd immunity plan is projected to kill a quarter of a million people. Johnson's response that afternoon. We are not 
Repeat not, closing schools now. 13th of March. 60% is the sort of figure you need to get herd, herd I mean, immunity. Th that's an awful lot of people dying in this country. Well, President Macron announces the closure of all French schools and universities. Ireland's Taoiseach Leo Varadkar shuts all education institutions. Germany closes schools, nurseries and universities. The WHO declares Europe the epicentre of the coronavirus pandemic. Johnson lifts restrictions on those arriving from known coronavirus hotspots, including Wuhan, Italy and Iran. The same day, the UK government downgrades its guidance on PPE, advising NHS staff to wear less protective equipment in all but the most high-risk situations. 14th of March, Johnson is still allowing mass events as 5,000 pack an arena in Cardiff to watch the band Stereophonics. 15th of March, Germany tightens border restrictions with Austria, Denmark, France, Luxembourg and Switzerland. Ireland asks all pubs to close. The UK government keeps pubs open. At this point, the UK has 1,400 confirmed cases and at least 35 deaths. 16th of March, the Imperial College study is published. It concludes over half a million Britons could die. Johnson asks people not to go to pubs, but allows them to stay open. On the same day, he jokes that the push to build new ventilators should be called Operation Last Gasp. 17th of March, France goes into lockdown. 18th of March, tracing every contact must be the backbone of the response in every country, says the WHO. It is now six days since the UK stopped contact tracing. The official UK death toll stands at 100. 19th of March, a government diktat tells NHS hospitals to move elderly patients into care homes, even if they have COVID-19. A Whitehall official will later say that the policy was designed as a stiff broom to free up capacity in hospitals. The policy is blamed for a later explosion of cases in care homes, with one cardiologist saying, we actively seeded this into the very population that was most vulnerable. 20th of March, UK closes schools and pubs on the same day a senior government advisor claims PPE shortages have been completely resolved. The British Medical Association will soon report acute PPE shortages in dozens of NHS trusts across the UK, putting frontline NHS staff at risk. Also on the 20th of March, Johnson tells the nation he's hoping to see his mother on Mother's Day. 22nd of March, under pressure, Johnson now tells people not to visit their mothers on Mother's Day. 23rd of March, the UK finally goes into lockdown. 27th of March, Johnson and Dominic Cummings have coronavirus. Cummings will break lockdown by driving 260 miles to Durham, then Barnard Castle. 7th of April, to date the UK has conducted just one-fifth the number of tests as Germany. The official UK death toll reaches 10,000. 18th of April, the government admits PPE is running out, but announces that 400,000 Turkish gowns are due to arrive in the UK the following day. They don't. 21st of April, it's revealed that PPE manufacturers' offers of help to the government have been repeatedly met with silence. Instead, millions of pieces of PPE are being shipped from the UK to Europe. By now, 80 frontline health workers have died from coronavirus. 22nd of April, the government announces it will resume contact tracing, critical to controlling the spread of the virus, having ditched the policy six weeks ago. Nine weeks later, beset with repeated failures, Downing Street will abandon its multi-million pound track and trace app. The Turkish consignment of PPE finally arrives in the UK. Ministers will admit that the 400,000 gowns ordered from a t-shirt salesman have failed safety standards and are completely useless. 25th of April, the official UK death toll reaches 20,000. The real total is probably around double that. 30th of April, Johnson says... We've so far succeeded in the first and most important task we set ourselves as a nation to avoid the tragedy that engulfed other parts of the world. At this point, Britain has the third highest number of deaths in the world. 5th of May. As the official death toll approaches 30,000, the Times reveals that the true number of fatalities is probably around 55,000. The UK now has the highest death toll in Europe.